You know, in my personal opinion, I don't think monks are very good multi-class. Their abilities, while useful for themselves, are not very good at working with other abilities in a multi-class situation. Monks are clearly the best characters in D&D. Look at all the attacks they can get from Flurry of Blows! First of all, how would you get in my house? Second of all, that is not at all what I'm talking about. Make us a good monk build! What? <laughs> Make us a good monk build! Get out of my house! Hello everybody, my name is Offbeat Outlaw. Today we've got a very special video. I, I, I always say that. I always say that, that today's video is special as if my other ones weren't. Well, today's video is an apology. I need to do the, I'm so sorry emoji. I need to do like the, <laughs> the thumbnail. I don't know if I'm actually gonna do that. No, today's video is um is my apology to monk and ranger mains you see on the offbeat outlaw channel i have notoriously made fun of you guys and called you guys the worst multi-class option I made fun of you in almost every single tier list video and i'm right but <laughs> <laughs> yes i am right you guys are not a great multi-class option but today i would like to show you how to make both the ranger and the monk in a multi-class together such that they are a true force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. So I know most of my builds utilize point buy, but this one, uh, I've, I've currently rolled this stat, so this perfect 20 in wisdom you see right here isn't actually how that works. Um, in, in, in actual game it would be an 18. So just reduce all of the wisdom modifier stuff by one and and it's exactly the same let's get into it so first of all you're gonna be a monk as we all know what uh, this monk's name is Gallagher Quickshot and the reason why this guy's got a very special name is because I am going to be joining a new D&D campaign on Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern with those lovely lovely folks over at the Lark Network so if you would like to see this power build in action I'm actually gonna show you guys how to play a power build in a campaign with a backstory and it's fun so please come and watch me Saturdays 8 p.m. Eastern. We got the, the session zero tomorrow. Hi, Editor Outlaw here. This is a lie. The session zero is actually tonight. I didn't realize how long it was going to take for me to actually get to editing this thing. I thought it would be out Friday, but it's not. It's out today. So uh, yeah, session zero tonight. Come check it out 8 p.m. Eastern. So please come check it out. But anyway, Gallagher Quickshot, that's his name. We are a monk. We are, more importantly, an astral self monk. And the reason why that is because we would like to take care and utilize that incredibly useful wisdom score, that plus five. You see, astral self monks, when they activate their arms of the astral selves, also I know, also <laughs> otherwise known as their standard skydog. If you would like to become a JoJo's reference, you activate it, and then you can punch using it, and those punches utilize your wisdom modifier for the attack and damage rolls, meaning you can be a wisdom focused monk. How, how does it all work? You get your unarmored defense. That also gives us an 18 AC at level 5, 17 if you're using point by, but still, that's still ridiculously high, being either full plate or half plate, which without any of the downsides. We have five key points. The DC is 16, which is really high. You have flurry of blows, patient defense, blah, 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 all this stuff. And we get Stunning Strike as well, with a DC of 16. This is already a really strong presence on the battlefield, and our monk weapon is a quarterstaff for the reason of our feet that we choose for being a, uh, a variant human. You see, we're going to be making use of the Magic Initiate feat, giving us access to Druid spells, specifically the cantrip Shillelagh. Now, Shillelagh is really cool. It allows you to imbue a quarterstaff, making it a magic weapon, making it a D8 damage dice, as well as allowing you to use your spellcasting modifier for the attack and damage rolls. This means that we now are really good at smacking stuff. Well, now we get to use our our incredibly potent wisdom modifier and allowing us to kind of dip back on the dexterity. This means that our monk's saving throws are going to be really, really tough, meaning that this monk can actually be more of a disruptor and less of a damage-focused character. See, the thing is with monks is they are not actually that damage-focused. Monks are more control and disruption. They are a support character more than anything, at least in my opinion. So with this high DC, it allows you to be a really annoying presence on the battlefield, inflicting stuns, um, inflicting stuns, flurry of blows all over the place. But I said that this was going to be a multi-class. I did, didn't I? Well, the reason why we're going to be a multi-class is because after these first five levels of Monk, your next three levels are going to be in Gloom Stalker Ranger, which means we then get to add our lovely wisdom modifier to our initiative bonus, making that a plus eight. We now have a plus eight to initiative and an 18 AC. 
that is a force to be reckoned with. We are going to be moving first most of the time. We have a movement of 40 feet. We can dash. We are going to be everywhere at once. This is an incredibly high speed build. On top of that, we are also going to be able to attack three times at the start on the first turn of combat, meaning we're going to be once again hitting a lot more with our shillelagh, giving us a lot more chances to apply stunning strikes. As we all know, three hits is better than one. <laughs> there are also ranger spells are incredibly useful, a lot of them being able to set up traps or disrupt the battlefield in some way, giving us access to ensnaring smite and whatnot. We also are going to be given access to favored foe, which is a really useful ability added in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We're also now, because of Beerware Gloomstalker, we're going to be basically invisible in darkness, and we're going to be able to see in darkness now, despite being a variant human. We are now almost invisible at nighttime. We are have an 18 armor class, meaning opponents that don't have dark vision have, have a disadvantage to hit our incredibly high armor class. And just to top it all off, uh, we are going to be moving first because of our initiative bonus. This is already a really strong disruption build and it's going to be dealing a lot of damage because of a little spell called Hunter's Mark, which I will explain at the end of this video for the true damage. Now, for these last two levels, once we getting us to 10th level, we're going to be taking two levels in Fighter, which we always should be taking. No matter what class or build you're going for, take two levels in Fighter and watch yourself be immediately more of a presence on the battlefield. Two levels in Fighter is always recommended, regardless of your class. With these two levels in Fighter, we are now given access to a Action Surge as well as a Fighting Style. Now, this Fighting Style can be anything of your choice. Dueling makes good sense if you want to be better with your Quarterstaff. Uh, superior Technique is also a viable option, giving you access to Repost to make use of that high a armor class. Or potentially some of the other, f or, or potentially the Ambush Feat, giving you uh, the ability to increase your stealth or to increase your initiative, bo your initiative bonus if you would like to be Eve going first even more often. There are also there are lots of great options for your fighting style. I don't think any of them are a bad choice, so I'm not going to recommend any of them either. However, moving forward from that, you now have access to Action Surge, and how the interaction between Action Surge and Dread Ambusher work is that this ability to attack three times on the first turn happens twice because the wording of dread ambusher does not states let me get the book if you take the attack action on your first turn you can make one additional weapon attack as part of that action this this does not say once on your turn once on your first turn if you have the ability to take multiple actions would you fucking look at that? You're in luck, baby! Dread Ambusher. It's just what it says. That's rules as written. You can disagree. I'm open to disagreement, but just don't be citing rules as written at me and then say something that's not rules as written. That is how that interaction works. So now you're making an effective six attacks on your first turn with Action Surge. And now I mentioned something earlier. I said that we're going to be doing a lot of damage with this build because this is a power build after all. And what would a power build be without a lot of damage? Well, let me state to you how this build works. So at some point before combat, you're going to need to do a few things. You're going to need to activate your Shillelagh cantrip. So your quarterstaff is now basically a wisdom fueled lightsaber. And you're going to need to activate your arms of the astral self to help increase your DPS. And here's how we're going to do it prior to the first turn. Okay. Now, I understand, this is a very circumstantial way to do a lot of damage, but if it works, you can really fuck someone up. <laughs> so I think this is a perfectly viable thing to do. The cast bonus, at, you're gonna use Hunter's Mark as a bonus action, and that will now start combat. Roll initiative. They now have Hunter's Mark on them. Hunter's Mark states that if you hit with a weapon attack that includes fist weapons, you may add a D6 onto the damage roll. We are going to be making in this turn eight attacks which is a lot of damage <laughs> so for this turn you run up to them as your first action as your first action you're gonna hit them three times that is 3d8 plus 15 with from your wisdom modifier then you're going to action surge and do that again 68 now plus 30 so we're already doing quite a lot of damage now we're going to use flurry of blows an extra 2d6 plus an extra 10, so that is now 68 plus 2d6 plus 40. Now to finally round this all out, you're going to be doing on top of this an extra plus 8d6 from Hunter's Mark. I want to quickly do a roll 
Just, 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 just for the funsies of it all. Quickly do a roll. To a total for this random roll, 97 damage. 97 damage from a monk is fucking awesome. And a monk ranger multi-class with only two levels of fighter. That is a really good damage build, considering that these two classes are largely considered to be underpowered. So, the monk and the ranger. They're not underpowered, they're just not utilized right. And with this build, keep in mind, you're not- you're, Let's look at these at this guy's saving throws as well as their AC and initiative. So while this is a bit of a first turn explosion, that is on average 110 damage. That's a lot for a first turn. You can absolutely demolish um, some opponents in the first turn. And the best part about this build is that they're going to be struggling to even hit you back after that because of this armor class. And, and look at these saving throws. Look at that wisdom save, that dex save, that strength bonus. And at this time, your proficiency bonus would be plus four. So this would be up by, this would be a plus six to your dexterity and a plus three to your strength. This guy hits really hard and is incredibly hard to hit. So this is, in my opinion, a really, really solid monk ranger uh, power build with only two levels in fighter. But you always put two levels in fighter. So that's like, that's like, it's like salt. Two levels in fighter in a power build is like salt on anything you're cooking. If you're not adding it, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but with this monk ranger build, I think it is incredibly powerful and with the ability to apply stun to apply stuns on opponents as well um, can really help out your team. I think that this is a great build for a monk and a ranger to prove just how useful they can be when they work together. And isn't that the beauty of Dungeons and Dragons? I know some of my builds are a little bit of solo heroes, but this guy, he's here to help. That's also why as part of Magic Initiate, for the one spell that he gets from Magic Initiate, he gets Healing Word. Because he wants to, on his uh, on his way into the battlefield, he notices that the paladin's looking a little down, and he goes, hey, here's looking at you, kid. But that is all the time I have for today. This is a bit of a short build. So please, reminder, you if you want to see this build in action, please check me out at twitch.tv slash the Lark Network every single Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, hosted by the lovely D&D Corso. He is a great creator. Um, I really enjoy working with him, and I hope that you will enjoy the story that we're going to concoct together, because this is truly going to be a one hell of a ride. So, thank you all so much for watching. Get the fuck out of my house. <laughs>